We call this meeting to, uh, to order at 6.30 today. Um, the date is August 15th? 14th. 14th. Um, at this moment, uh, Tom, can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. All right, and for the item of the meeting minutes of July 24th, 2017. <coughs> I make a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, July 24th, 2017, as written. I have second. A, a motion for, and I have a motion uh, and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. I make a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, July 31st, as written. I have a motion for. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Saying none. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. And Diane, if you want to take this. This is a proclamation of appreciation for Sergeant Eric Hall. Whereas Sergeant Eric Hall has been an integral part of Templeton's police station cell project from the very beginning, giving selflessly of his time and talents, and whereas Sergeant Eric Hall has worked diligently to obtain donated materials and gather volunteers to help with this project, and Sergeant Eric Hall was an active participant throughout the life of this project, assisting in all areas and seeing it through to the final police completion of the police, police station so that is a tongue twister now therefore we the board of selectmen join with other members of the templeton community to express our sincere appreciation of derek's dedicated service to the town of templeton and to its police station cell project thank you I gotta say, it's quite a relief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the chief said, "Hey, just be here." And of course, I'm just—I listen to the chief, and I'm here. I actually, I'm glad I'm not in any trouble. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea that this was coming. This that's that's awesome. You. Yes. I just want to get the other signatures for okay. you, if you don't mind. No, sure. But sure. we really appreciate you. Okay. Thank no, you. thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, you're the definition of, of what Temple needs. Is we need people like really just willing to push up and stand for the community and I'm I'm so grateful that we have people like you in our community Eric it really truly awesome thanks okay thank you so thank you and now we have a presentation by Kelly for the fiscal year 17 financials okay um so um I gave you the handouts there in the front. Um, so the Q quarter, uh, the fourth quarter was um, was <laughs> it was really busy um, in the finance office with the reduced staff, but we were able to manage to um, get through that. We didn't have any severe lag in trying to get things, um, you know, processed. We had to put in some extra hours, but we managed to get that done. Um, this I also got everything set up for FY 18 um, since they were approved uh, the town meeting approved the budget in the format that it is um, I was able to enter all of the new accounts get those all set up ready to go um, and do the transfers that were approved so we have no deficits for fiscal um, 17 so, so we are on news. on board with that um, Attached to the report, you'll find the year-end budget versus actual for both revenue and expense for fiscal 17 and the year-end balance sheet. Yes, I said balance sheet. Um, we did have a modest increase in the fund balance for fiscal 17, and we should have enough free cash to cover all the prior year's deficits at the fall town meeting. 
So with what we have and the auditors were here last week, um, everything looks good that we are on track to be able to take care of everything we need to um, at the fall town meeting with all the deficits in the prior year. So we should be good to go with that. Um, the assessor, Luann, has been out on vacation, so I didn't get a report from her. Um, but we will get that adjusted and inserted in here and get you a new copy <coughs> when she's back to the office. Um, the treasure collector finance office, again, we've been super busy with the uh, fourth quarter billing going out and the reduced staff of trying to keep up with the collections. Um, um, then we had another motor vehicle excise go out. Um, we got the bad check policy. Um, one of the biggest issues that we took care of in the fourth quarter in that office is the American Tissue Properties. Um, the, the taking that was done, um, I think it was in 14, whenever that, the last takings were done, um, there was an incorrect calculation of how they were taken. So everything had to be backed out back to I think it was 2003 somewhere in there every single year every single property it all had to be reversed and then retaken um, so now that all of that process has taken place we now are to in a position where we can actually dis make the decision how we're going to move forward on the American tissue properties so it's either going to land court or land of um, low value um, so we're we're to that point now finally with American tissue that everything is accurate the way it's supposed to be and we can move forward with doing something with those properties excellent okay um, so that's pretty much for the Q4 and then the reports attached um, you'll see that it's the combined balance sheet now this is after the auditors looked over everything last week we had a couple of changes um, but this is as accurate as it can be unless something you know and after their field work something crazy comes up that they um, find that needs to be changed this is what it is now um, so you can kind of see you've got your general fund you've got the special revenue capital projects the sewer enterprise and the agency and trust funds um, I just wanted to bring to your attention um, in the capital um, the capital projects down at the bottom you'll see the prior year deficit um, we had to work with um, this was one of the corrections that needed to be done on the financials is for the sewer pump project um, that you have the bond paperwork to sign tonight um, we had to reclass some accounts or some bills that were coded last year and this year to the sewer pump uh, station that were coded to the sewer funds operating operating budget so we had to move those out and move those to the capital project and since at the end of fiscal 17 we didn't have this bond of the paperwork you're going to sign that's why we show that deficit um, as we do have the bonding coming in the, the you know all of that still will be taken care of at the fall meeting we will not have that deficit because we will have the money to take care of that at this point in this fiscal year um, so pretty much that's where we are um, excuse me this one yes. I, I just want to remind you that similar to the school project yeah. this is a technical deficit it's not a Real, right. It was paid for with cash, um, but uh, on these capital projects, uh, normally you would make a, a either do one of two things: run a technical deficit like this, then clean it out when you bond the project, or you would take a small amount of bonding enough to cover your design costs and the like. Okay, Sorry, Kelly. Kelly. That's Thank okay. You. I'm glad you explained. Kelly, that. can I ask what the miscellaneous items are? Um, um, the, in uh, the top part under general fund, uh, the twenty thousand eight ninety six. Before, um, no. What that is is we received on the budget um, co community compact grants. The two that we received, the one for the um, the IT. budget, the IT and the budget. Mm -hmm. The state duplicate gave us those duplicate, so we had them. We got double 
double money for those. So we had to repay it. So we had to repay them, and I needed to carry it forward because it took us, you know, they, they were so willing to put the money in, that was great, but we couldn't find anybody that would take it back. So it took okay. months for us to finally okay. get through all the red tape. So that's why that's there, because we had to refund that money, and that was done in July. And both of those um, in the capital projects for the sewer department the 90,000 and the reserved for chapter 90 those are both having to do with the Pleasant Street pump station no or just the, the yeah. top one the the, the the deficit with the this the pump station is the 9412 and the reserve for the chapter 90 is just money that <clears throat> has been spent is not come back as a reimbursement it just there's always a flux there in the chapter 90 um, Quick question on the fund equity, yes. and this may be a, an ignorant question, but reserved for prior year S and I. What does S and I stand for? Snow and ice deficit. It was an ignorant, ignorant question. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it took me a long time. To tell you, um, yeah. So that's the prior year snow and ice that we had the shortage on. Okay. We need to take care of. Any other questions on the balance sheet? Okay. Um, and then your next report you'll see is the revenue for um, the end of the year final. Everything has been recorded. The cash is reconciled. We are off $9,400 that um, we're still in the process of looking for. Um, but when we finished out 16, there was like 50 something thousand and we've got it down to 94. Um, the amount exactly that it's off is very familiar to me. Um, and you know, working through that, so I'm looking into that. Um, hopefully, this we is can a get book that to, to bank, right? Okay, exactly. Yep. Um, and I do believe it has something to do with the voided checks and how that works in the system. I they're very, I, I don't know why that is such a difficult process, but between the it just, I don't know, it's confusing. That's why it, oh, it's just awful, but anyway. Um, so this is your end of year revenue. So you can see for real estate taxes, um, with what we have, um, there was 68,000 under of what we collected. Um, that does not cause a revenue deficit because it is taxes. Um, there's no, you know, it, it, it's a, a ball, you know, it's, it's a, not a ballpark, but it's a, there's no guarantee because you know not everyone's going to pay their taxes. It would be great if that would happen, but, you know, so that's why you always usually have a deficit there. Um, you'll but see what happens with that? It, like, will, it just carries forward on the receivables on the other side. So that 68 will probably come in in this fiscal year. Oh, yeah, I'm there's a constant of, roll okay. of, you know, you never right, when receive. You look at, when you look at your revenues of your real estate tax receivables, uh, even your motor vehicle tax receivables, you'll see, so mm -hmm. that if a 2005 that we haven't gone to foreclosure, and let's say there's a 2005 tax involved, when that's taken in, it is actually credited to the 2005 tax oh, year. Okay. Yeah. And so then you'll see at the top of the next page, um, the budget was a million dollars for excise tax, and we received a million eighty thousand five seventy seven. So we got 80,000 more in excise than we were anticipating. Um, everything else, as you go down the list, you'll see that everything is in the positive of what we received. Um, as you get to the bottom, you'll see also with the, um, the revenues that came in for all the different special revenue funds, the grants, um, all of that. So when you have time, you can take a look at that. And if you have any questions on something, please let me know. Um, I'd be happy to answer on that. And then same with the um, the budget for the, the expenditure side. Um, you know, you have your general funds for all the departments. You have all of the different special revenue funds that we had. Um, so there was nothing really out of the ordinary. The one that I want to bring your attention to is the 911 grant. There has been questions as to why on the um, expenditure ledger that that was overdrawn. In re-looking at that with the auditors, we examined it from <clears throat> the beginning of 2013 on and how, 
how it was accounted for, how the police department think thought it was accounted for, how the documents from the state show how it should be accounted for, and we had not been doing that properly. So I went back, the auditors asked me to go back to the beginning of 13 and do a spreadsheet to show the breakdown exactly this column, this is what it should have been based on how it should have been accounted for. This is what happened in the general fund dispatch. So there was money that was taken from the 911 grant, but it was taken through the dispatch out of the general fund. So I have all of that documentation that I sat down with the auditors and we went through that. So monies that were supposed to be for the dispatch fund were pulled from the 911 fund. Right, okay. right, yeah. So they they were given the, the money for 911 and then it was taken from the it was taken from the general fund to cover cover that which okay. it should not have happened okay um, and at that time because you didn't have clear good financials for town meetings for 13 and 14 you know the, it, it appeared that the funds were there to, to, to in take 15 yeah and in 15 it appeared the funds were there to be taken to put somewhere else in the general fund and they were not so so there was a discrepancy of I, I think it was like 90,000 right right that was, that was a, right and so the discrepancy I, based off an email with Carter that yeah um, that was a difference of them what he had to what the town had right so you, you keep a running total and he has, he has a running, a running total, total. Um, do we know originally why that running total had, had been off was it something you know the when when the invoices were submitted was it a different accounting code at the top do we know why that would take place it's because well it was because there was never a clear um, it, well, in 13 and 14, there was never a clear, consistent, how is this being accounted for? So when those were originally submitted, submitted they would pull from whatever right, account? whatever. Okay, yeah. I see how that. Yeah, and then when I did the recreation, I recreated it based on the documents that I received from the um, dispatch, you know, admin, and I didn't understand how you know I took it verbatim that if this is what you ask for reimbursement is this is what you you know but it, the 911 grant doesn't work that way so I've worked all of that out with um, the chief with Carter um, the auditor we all sat down and discussed this we all going forward know exactly how this needs to be done um, the money will be spent by the end of the fiscal year it's not something that the money can carry forward as it has, you know, if we did have, we had a deficit <coughs> stuff. So we have to be at zero on that account at the end of the year. So if there's funds available, those have to be spent or they need to be returned to the state 911. That account, so to speak, yeah. is not in the, do we owe money to someone? No, no. no. Yeah, no, it's in okay. the positive. So um, if Originally, you, it said on paper we owed like a right. thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars, but right. they have been backed out. We have now have like an eight, right. nine thousand dollars. And the fund balance was sufficient to cover yes. uh, it. Um, at, through the recreation, it right. was oh, not right. because no. somebody wasn't tracking it appropriately. Well, it was both. It was you know in thirteen and fourteen, it wasn't tracked appropriately. So when the general fund it showed in dispatch, you had all this money and they voted at town meeting to take 30000 out of there and put it somewhere else. We shouldn't have there wasn't that. the money there to do that. Um, so right now, after there was one warrants payable, so at the end of the year, they had 78270 That was the bottom end. And that money has to be spent. And that money needs to be spent plus whatever we receive in this fiscal year. Are you going to be able to spend all that money? Well, as we talked, this was... <laughs> When Mr. Markle here, this was the original plan on how we were going to reduce the cost of the station to the public. Okay. Is those funds were going to be used to renovate the dispatch side of the station. So. And that can still be. In short, it will be. Okay. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I just want to say that in a community that has not had um, a history of strong accounts for the last five years, uh, I've said it before, I just want to repeat it again. You're going to have a few more years of this kind of thing. You got 25,000 plus or minus in tailings. We haven't fully identified yet. You got 9,400 bucks. Uh, I think this year we had about 22,000 in tax title that had been consistent for mm -hmm. three, four, five years. So once you can watch that, it's such a small amount as 
I mean, it's not a small amount of money to a lot of folks, but in terms of uh, over the, the four years, five years, when you look at $25 million of tax collections and the uh, account's $22,000 off, it's, it's immaterial. So the accountants, uh, the auditors were comfortable this year in writing that off. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, as when we did 13, 14, 15, 16, 13, 14, 15 look great. You find something in 16, mm. <laughs> you yeah. go back and restate 14. Yeah. You know, so you, you are going to have a few of these things, but I do believe you're getting to the end of trail of any of these kinds of accounting um, surprises, if you will. Excellent. So, what happens to um? Do we still have a veterans revolving? Or I thought no. we were no. So what happens to the funds that are in the revolving account here? There were they have there to were. What happened is all the money that we received for veterans last this fiscal mm -hmm. year, okay, I t had to take what was budgeted for, which I think it was 50, 50,000, yeah. I think it was 50,000, mm -hmm. had to take everything that we paid out to veterans. I took the 50,000 that was, you know, budgeted, deducted that off. <clears throat> the remaining funds that were received were moved out of that and moved into the general fund revenue. For they become miscellaneous revenues okay. and they'll okay. flow to your undesignated fund balance, okay. uh, what you all would, would think of as free cash. Yeah. Okay. And so it has been dissolved and is no more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Do please look that over. Um, we'll get a copy off to the... Uh, uh, advisory committee uh, if you have any questions if we could get them within let's say two weeks that would be terrific because then we can get you some answers um, uh, before we start to get deeper into the fiscal 19 on the timeline with the auditors uh, yes. when are we expected to receive their 100 percent work um, well the problem with finishing our audit is the Worcester Regional Retirement mm -hmm. and light and water it's kind of a twofold thing the we have the light audit but the water audit we can't get until we get the current Worcester regional retirement numbers okay yep. they can't finalize their audit once they finalize their audit and we have Worcester dates. regional they can finish ours okay so it's a it's a waiting game at this point but the basic of everything that the auditors need to do our financial piece mm -hmm. of our audit these are just the GASB things that you have to have extra. Um, the, that is completed. Okay. Um, so we should be able to, you know, take those financials and sit down with the DOR, make sure that we are all on the same page. Everything is, you know, where it needs to be um, to move forward. Perfect. So. If I might follow yeah. up on that, we did send uh, to the DOR today, uh, I don't know, eight or nine point update uh, letting them know that we are waiting the Worcester Regional Retirement System uh, they have to take that several hundred million dollar liability that they have and apportion it off to all of the member uh, entities because we have to carry that now on our balance sheet. Do you think you could forward me that email? Um, sure Thank you send it out to everyone um, and uh, so that that's what we're waiting but in the meantime uh, we believe we'll be able to put together the, the free cash uh, and uh, with the trial balance sheet, some other work that uh, Kelly's done. Uh, and then we've uh, asked DOR, given them some advice, uh, that we would like to meet with them towards the end of September. Okay. Uh, so that we can review what we think is the draft audit, though it won't be in draft form until we can get those Worcester Regional Retirement System numbers. Uh, and lay out for them uh, all of the uh, workout, what we've come to call the workout articles for the fall town meeting. Uh, because um, although we have a memo in the book, goes back to April that says, yep, this is the way you're going to do everything, we want to take in the latest numbers and the actual Warren articles uh, and make sure we're seeing uh, the nodding heads all over again. Uh, that would allow us in uh, you know mid-October uh, to um, have a, a meaningful discussion with you about the warrant and to have Tony make his uh, exit uh, conference presentation, his, his uh, presentation to you. We'll have the staff exit conference earlier than that, um, but that would allow him to make his public presentation to you 
uh, with my goal being uh, no later than October 15th. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right. So the next packet I gave you, unless you have any more questions on the expenditure side. Um, so in the DOR memo, they had requested um, to receive a monthly report from us going forward um, this fiscal year on our reconciliation process and how things are going. So you'll see on this page that says monthly reconciliation report. This is what I've put together that we'll be providing to them. Um, it'll have the month, the fiscal year, and you'll see the due dates. So by the 10th of the month, I will have the budget versus actual to the town administrator, sure, town administrator for review. By the 15th, I'll get the sewer report from the sewer department so that I can reconcile the sewer with um, the finances here at the town hall, which we've not been able to do except for once a year. Um, the cash book, the treasurer will have all the cash book reconciled with the bank statements by the 20th. Um, but also by the 20th, I will have all the accounts receivable reconciled for all the, um, the sewer betterments, the Title Fives, real estate, taxes, abatements, all of that. Um, by the 24th, I will have the cash book reconciled with the GL. And then the final trial balance and reconciliations to the Board of Selectmen. So on the, by the 25th, you will have this. So if you don't have a meeting, it will be on the table with the warrants that week um, to be reviewed and for you to sign. So on this sheet will be all of the signatures. So it will have the town administrator that I've gotten the budget <coughs> versus actual. I will have my signature that I received what I received from the sewer. The uh, treasurer collector will sign that the <coughs> cash book is with the bank statements. Um, the accounts receivable with the collector, I'll sign for that. The cash book to the GL, I'll sign for that. And then you all, five of you, will sign at the bottom for the trial balance and the reconciliation to the Board of Selectmen that you all have reviewed it. Um, you have any questions we've taken care of. So when you sign that report to send to them, you're stating that you are in agreement with everything that has taken place and you're good with that. Um, so what will go to them is this cover page and any documentation that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so in the packet for this, you'll see on the next page, this will be in the, what will be used for the reconciliation process. So, um, so let me give you an example. So this is a reconcili reconciliation issue for um, the sewer department reconciliation. Did it reconcile the first time? Well, it would be, could be no. My variance could be because they never sent me the commitment report and or we missed a payment. They didn't apply a payment. We got a payment. You know, the, that's the type of things that we're looking for. Um, and then, you know, those will be written out in a description form so that you, we, can, we can also use these in future months to figure out, okay, where's our problem? You know, is there something we can do to correct this moving forward so we can kind of see it? Because eventually you will see a consistent problem by keeping track of it this way. Um, then the steps to use to reconcile. If we're able to, un to not reconcile it, we put the variance, our signature, and the date. That will then go attached here to the back of this. Um, the budget versus actual will be attached. Um, the um, reconciliation of the sewer, the cash book, the receivables, um, the trial balance, everything when you get this will have all of these documents attached to the back. So you will have every single thing that has been provided for this month. Um, as soon as this is completed and you all have signed off on it, we will send that full packet to the DOR so that they can see that we have followed every, every policy that needs procedures that need to be done in that month to make sure that we are in total reconciliation mm -hmm. and they are know <clears throat> that we are on track going forward. What are you providing for cash book reconciliation with statements in the GL? Um, it will be, um, I, I have come up with a report. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I've been doing that. And that's, there's no yeah, way you no, can print any of that out. We haven't done that. So um, I'm just curious. So it will be a report that um, the treasurer will enter all of the balances of the cash book okay. on the 31st or the whatever the last day of the month is. Yep. 
Then at the bottom, there's different scenarios. Okay, there's a deposit in transit. Yeah. There's okay. outstanding checks. You know, there's a problem with this issue, and all of those things will then get what the real cash is. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that will match. If that matches the GL, great. If it doesn't then you know we need to look for right but in the end it can get reduced to this single sheet exactly yeah. now um, these yeah. will tomorrow go to we wanted to run them by you tonight uh, these tomorrow uh, to sh the, the one sheet uh, will go to uh, DOR uh, along with a request of if you have something different you'd like us to use please send it to us so we can see what you have there's a little more um, paperwork here then uh, I, I think the staff might like um, certainly it's more than I've ever had to uh, work through with the staff in any other situation uh, but I think that given the microscope that you're under by DOR uh, given the fact that I think there's a great deal to be learned from why didn't things reconcile whether it's sewer the cash book or something else um, that will help lead you to better procedures um, or at least document if every month you can't reconcile because department A, B, or C didn't do something. This is going to be your way to document it and to hold them accountable. So um, <clears throat> it's a little more than I'd like the staff to have to do, but I think that in your circumstances um, <coughs> it, it's warranted and will give you a good path forward. And I think we've got it reduced to where everyone at least understands the need. Uh, for these additional steps just a suggestion I would make is at the sign-off points um, should also have a date so whoever signs puts the date that they're signing that way you can see we can easily see any of us sure. can see the DOR can see oh here's where it got backed up you know we didn't get you know the okay. cash book reconciliation done yep. it was supposed to have been done on the 20th but it didn't get done till the 22nd Okay. You know, the selectmen should have signed off on it, you know, the 25th, 26th. They didn't sign off till it's the 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I think that would be a good visual and a summarized visual of That's a good point. Yeah, where did the that. process get hung up okay. and is it getting hung up consistently at the same point? Okay. That's a very good point. No, that's we'll a good point. We could probably get the, all the signature lines pushed a little bit <clears> to <throat> the left <throat> and just have a date column down the right, Kelly. Yeah. And then we will have all of this in a, in a book that will be a book by month. So at the bottom, you'll see that there's also a date for that we sent it to the DOR. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, you know, if there's ever any question, you know, we, we will have everything in that book to be. So you're only sending this top page to them no. or you're sending they'll everything get, to get them everything. too? Yeah. So that'll just be like month yeah. by month kind of. You know, maybe after a couple of months, they may decide, okay, we've seen enough that you're, you know, we just mm -hmm. want your cover page. You know, it, it, it may, I'm sure this will evolve as the year goes on. Um, but I, I think, like, like Carter said, we are un, under such a microscope with them. We have to show our best foot forward that we are being fiscally responsible and that we are moving forward in a positive fashion um, to, to, as the boat has pretty much been righted now, we need to keep it upright moving forward. So the sheet for the reconciliation issues, um, mm -hmm. does the person who's having the issue um, yeah. filling it out and signing it? So if there's, you use the um, sewer department as an example. So if you're, I mean, right. is there your signature and their signature? No. It would or be just the, theirs? It'd be, it'd be yours. So like it'd if be you're, ours? Right. So if, if no, the, it's, so do you, it's okay, the person so, reconciling the account on right. the second. So it would be, yeah, so it would be, um, so you're, you have the sewer department. Let's use that as an example. Or actually, let's use water. Let's use water. Well, water's yeah. not on here, but. Well, but all the checking accounts mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So you're reconciling the water account, and you're missing five deposits. And you have to figure out, why am I missing these five deposits? Well, is it because the water isn't sending their deposits soon enough? Do we need to find is are they somewhere in the office and they got overlooked misplaced mm -hmm. didn't get them those are the types of things that are going to need to be noted on each one of those and then so who signs the bottom the um it would be the treasure collector because they were the one trying to reconcile, reconcile. the account 
Yeah. It's the party trying to reconcile the account. Yeah. I guess I would want to know it was discussed with the appropriate department and that apartment, that department has been away, made aware that we are having these issues and, right. you know, and, and so I, and I, I think that more than one party should be signing this, depending on what the issue is. Well, I think steps used to, to reconcile the variance. Um, contacted water, not to say that. Right. Contacted right. the department, uh, discovered that there were five turnovers they hadn't made. They provided, discussed with them the need to make turnovers in a timely fashion. I think they can explain that right there. Um, if you think, who else would right. you have signed it? It's accountability. It? But who else would you have sign it? Well, who did you discuss it with? Who's responsible for sending those things over in any department? Mm -hmm. But that's that's us. We're we're ultimately the ones accountable for all of this. So I mean, you you might not even have to sign. How many off phone on this, calls have Carter we had to make to in the three or four this. months that I've been reconciling the cash book every single month? Yeah. Same. I understand thing. that, but what I'm yeah. what I'm yeah. saying though is that if we don't feel comfortable with the, the variances that are reported on here, we can say, well, we're not signing off on that until we get a better explanation of these variances, and that's that. That's that's we'll yeah. send it back to the sewer department. Yeah. We are ultimately accountable for everything on this document. I understand that. And if we don't feel comfortable with it, then we can send it back to whatever. I want to know that it's already been discussed and signed off on by a department or whomever okay. is responsible for turning those things okay, let's, over. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it. My concern is in time delay. I don't want to put this thing in somebody's box <clears throat> and send it back. Not all departments are as. Um, that's my point. Speedy That's and my point. Uh, <laughs> responsive. I don't want to hold the report up I awaiting get that, but for. You can ask for something 10 times and you don't get it. Or, yep, yep, I'll do better next month. Or, yep, yep, been there, done that, yeah. doing it. Um, except for this is going to show you month by month yes, and build the case for us to come in and <laughs> say, we need a policy on X because you'll remember mm -hmm. from the reconciliation reports of this, this, and this, here's okay. what happened. Yeah. But we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, so the last thing I have is the current month's budget versus actual for July. Um, everything is closed out um, on the expenditure <coughs> side. Um, we're still in the reconciliation process, so I didn't provide a revenue. Um, I think I, I kind of thought about this today as I was working through this. I think on the revenue side, I probably will only give you that quarterly this year. So when I do the quarterly report, you'll have the three months of revenue. And I won't give you that every month except for the expenditure side. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want to do that is that, as I explained last year, that on the grant funds or the donation accounts or any of those, on this first column where I can put in and tell you, you know, okay, we had or whatever, this includes the beginning balance plus whatever revenue has been received so this is what's actually to be spent then I only need to do that four times a year because trying to keep up with that every month and then you get more deposits or something I just think that's going to be a little cleaner to be able to do that just the four times a year um, you know in case unless there's a problem where I see that it's going severely well, negative and, and if your business had monthly cash flows yeah that would have some meaning to you, yeah. but given that uh, you know the vast majority of your revenues, north of 80 percent, come in on a quarterly basis, whether it's your taxes um, and 1.1 uh, million, uh, about 10 percent of your revenues come in basically uh, the bulk in one month. Uh, so the uh, quarterly revenues, I think, will. Uh, be meaningful yet without creating additional workload on the staff. Okay. Any questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kelly. Okay. Uh, next item is action item for appointments. So we have two appointments for the Veterans Oversight Board and the Recreation Committee. So I make a motion to appoint J. 
John Kaplis to the Veterans Oversight Board for a term of one year to expire on June 30th, 2018. Do you want to do these separately? Mr. Forts, do you want to, Chairman? Yeah, we can just bundle them up together and just. And then I make a motion to appoint Jessica Sutton to the Recreation Committee for a one year term to expire June 30th, 2018. I have a question, though, regarding the veterans. Um, I thought John left the um, VSO position for you know, conflicts, and no. now he's going to be an oversight board that oversees the position that he wasn't able to hold. Is that not a conflict also? Um, I, I don't think so because he's doing it similar to Diane being on the, uh, and John being on the school building committee, uh, someone being on an ad hoc committee uh, when we bring that to you to dispose of the Baldwinville school. Uh, because this is a, a policy board, a, a sounding board, if you will, I, I don't see the same conflict uh, as uh, with um, a paid position. Okay. All right. At least that would be my take on it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'll second that. All right. Motion for and a second. Um, any discussion? Mm -hmm. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Um, action for Hardwick Winery two-day license for Arts and Crafts Festival. <coughs> the owner couldn't make it tonight. This is the basically the same license they get every year for the Arts and Crafts Festival. Um, they have everything. They're in compliance with everything. They have their certificate of insurance, the letter from the owner, okay. and they've already paid. So <coughs> just needs a vote from you unless you have any questions. I make a motion to approve the two-day wine tasting and sale of wine license for Saturday, August 19th, 2017, and Sunday, August 20th, 2017, to be exercised in a tent set up on the property of Pamela Scorco, 3 Boynton Street, Templeton, to Hardwick Vineyard and Winery from the hours of 10 to 5 and 10 to 4, respectively. That's the end of my motion. <laughs> Sorry. Chief, I was thinking, but I think it's fine. <laughs> Chief, we never had any issues. That. Uh, we've never had no, any issues uh, with the wine tasting food. Um, so it's tasting, right? No one's out there getting hammered. No, it's a tasting. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I would be in favor of it. <laughs> Perfect. I'll second the motion. All right. Uh, motion four and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment uh, related to the traffic on Wellington South because it's going to be associated at the time with the craft fair? Would this be appropriate to bring it up? Uh, absolutely. I'll entertain it. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would just like to mention. Chief, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, can I ask you to yes. stand at least? Uh, the traffic pattern change for Wellington and South Roads will be effective Tuesday, tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, traffic pattern will change on South Road and Wellington Road. Wellington Road will become a one-way southbound from Dudley Road to the intersection of Wellington and South Road. South Road will become one-way northbound from the intersection of Wellington Road and South Road to Dudley Road. The roads have been properly marked and reflective of the change. We started the process. Everybody knew it was coming. The issue that we're at now is because of the work that Alan's crew is doing as we come up the road and down the road, we have to make the change. We can't wait. Mm -hmm. All the signs are going to be up. Everything's in place. So it has to go that quick. Otherwise, the signs are going to be up and everyone's going to be, Indian which piece. way are we going? So as of right now, Wellington Road is, is going up. So it's indicating that. And then tomorrow as they come back down, by 3 o'clock, the change will be finishing up everything and the change will go into effect. They have flashing sign boards. Uh, it'll be on the town's website. They have uh, prepared uh, a public notification for some social media sites. There will be a code red notification as well, I believe. Should go out tonight. Going out tonight. Uh, and um, would you speak to the uh, both the convenience of the added parking and the, uh, the fact that uh, that will give us an opportunity to 
inform more people about this change. So in talking to Alan, we discussed that making a change now before the craft fair was the best idea because of the parking issue. Every year we always have a parking issue because residents park on both sides of roads, then how can you get emergency equipment up the road? This way, it's one way already. We're actually gonna go out and measure two cars on both sides. I believe they already did it during the traffic study that you can get emergency vehicles through the traffic if vehicles are on both sides of the road. But this alleviates a lot of the traffic problem. They'll be able to come up Wellington, pull into the school field, park, and then I believe they can exit right out of the gate near the skate park or they can just go right back out and come up the front of the school and take the left down south road. So it should help alleviate a lot of the traffic issues that we have during the craft fair with the overcrowded parking. Excellent. And on south road, uh, you're going to allow parking on both we're gonna sides? Is that what you're saying? We're, we're going to measure it tomorrow yeah. to make sure that it's the proper width for emergency vehicles. If not, I will go out and post as I normally do every year for the craft fair. No parking on this side going up, no parking on this side coming down so that we don't have that problem. Thank you, Chief. Any other further discussion? Okay. Um, thank you for that too, by the way. Uh, so we got another action item for the Army Corps Engineers <laughs> drainage easement for Highway Department at Birch Hill Dam. Will Mr. May will be discussing this? Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's a 24-inch uh, drainage line uh, that discharges, and it goes across Army Corps property. Um, this has been going back and forth for a while. It's had the other several uh, core, and we simply need to maintain that uh, continued drainage easement. I make a motion to <clears throat> approve the Birch Hill Dam project easement number DACW33-2-17-020 for the drainage pipe to, uh, there's more than one easement. No, there's just the one that it goes over the expired one, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, to be signed by the, does this have to be signed today? No. No. By the chairman of the board? No, they've been very patient okay, as we worked you. through a couple of these. Well, he's around, he's just not here tonight, yeah. correct? Okay, yeah. to be signed by the chairman of the board. A second that. Your motion for and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Next item is the action for the CDBG lien subordinate, uh, subordination uh, for South Road. Uh, in simplest terms, when we gave um, these uh, various uh, loans slash grants, the property is encumbered. If the property is being sold or refinanced, uh, we need to subordinate to the new owner or to the new financing institution, and you must grant the authority to do that. So we're essentially saying by approving this that we are placing the amount on top of their mortgage. So what's where yeah, we? You're, you're remaining basically in second place. Okay. Yeah, I looked at that. And normally, you have to, you know, you there are guidelines that are have to be adhered to, which I couldn't look up. But in my previous life, um, I did a lot of underwriting. If they're refinancing or taking out a mortgage to pay off a lot of debt or they normally would not qualify for this, so that's probably not the reason okay. um, that they're taking this out. So what it means is that automatically when you refinance or sell, or when you refinance, the first mortgage gets paid off, and this mortgage would move up into first place. So in order to, if you sign this, then they lift that and put it in second place. Okay. Or third place, or fourth, because I've whatever seen that happen. Yeah, whatever. whatever so it has to be, no bank is going to allow, you know, a, you know, 20 some odd thousand dollar, um, I don't even know how much it's going to, oh, 10,000 to be ahead of their um, lien period. So that's really all that means. But Michael Pink Pink wrote that um, 
they do meet the guidelines for automatic approval, but technically the board can modify, so we just have to make sure, which we have not. Um, that's the only reason he brought it to us. Okay. So normally, um, so I make a motion to approve the subordination agreement. Um, <clears throat> Oh, in the amount of uh, 10560 dated um, to be signed by the chairman of the board. I think that's all that needs to be on there. I'll get a motion for Do I hear a second? Second. Motion for and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. <coughs> Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Now we have the uh, ban for Pleasant Street Pump Station, an action item for $2.3 million. The Pleasant Street uh, Pump Station is being rebuilt uh, at an estimated cost of $2.3 million. Uh, the end loan is about $1.7 million seven, uh, after a grant of approximately $600,000. Uh, there were six bidders on it. Uh, the low bid uh, is within the uh, parameters uh, that were laid out for it, and I've given you the um, approval letter from the U.S. Uh, RDA. Uh, we did receive um, four bids on the bond anticipation note. Uh, they were nicely grouped, uh, pretty close to what we had on the school, the net interest cost for Eastern Bank, uh, who was the same as on the, the school, was 1.1440. The high net cost was 1.690. Uh, um, so a little bit uh, higher, modestly higher, one-tenth of a percent on the low end, um, and about 0.15 percent lower on the high end. Uh, the uh, request here tonight is that you authorize this $2.3 uh, million dollar ban. Um, we would then complete all the paperwork, and there's quite a bit for you all to sign tonight. Uh, and then Thursday, the uh, financial advisors actually are going to come up, pick it up, get it hand-delivered so we can get the cash deposited within a couple days thereafter. Um, this uh, very likely will be the subject of um, a supplemental vote for the sewer department at the fall town meeting. Um, I think this matures within this fiscal year, if I remember correctly. Um, or not, or we'll take it out with the permanent financing uh, once the project is, is complete. But it was, a, it was a nice grouping. You had four active bidders um, and, and a nice grouping, we thought. So the motion that needs to be made is to award to award the ban, the ban to uh, Eastern. Eastern. Yep. <clears throat> so I make a motion to award the ban to Eastern Bank in the amount of uh, in the amount of two point three million. Three million. Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, as as set forth in their bid. Yep. Okay. My motion. I'll second it. Motion for and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? So the interest rate for the Eastern Bank is 1.1440? 1.049. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. 1.1440, rather. Okay. I apologize. But that is a, a net interest rate. Yeah. I just yeah. want to be clear on that. With a, with a coupon? And After the premium application, yeah. 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 Something I've never quite gotten used to in 35 years of doing this, the whole premium business. <laughs> that answer everything for you yep. okay perfect um, so motion for second no other discussion Diane yes Doug yes and I vote yes as well uh, we're not going to try to circulate that during the meeting because there are literally I think about a dozen places each one of you need to individually sign. okay um, excuse the ban so the action countdown to fiscal year 19 budget and legislative package uh, so we had, um, on my side, I'd prepared 
um, the uh, uh, first calendar. Normally, I do two of them, um, one around this time of year, uh, which if I uh, starts with the uh, select board uh, retreat, drawing out of that retreat, um, we then draft uh, a series of uh, goals and policy statement uh, for the coming year uh, and have the revenue uh, projections put together by that point in time. Um, it gives you a month uh, to review them. Uh, we have suggested um, uh, that that be done in conjunction, uh, that you invite the advisory committee to that meeting. Um, and that allows you by mid-November to agree revenue projections accepting uh, House 1. You don't get House 1 until the earliest is January 15. You don't have meaningful revenue projections until you have House 1. Um, that uh, was once you've adopted the revenue projections that you're uh, agreeable to, uh, lets me develop the guidance memo to the department heads, um, and uh, I distribute that normally around December 1, uh, and it allows uh, me to have uh, everything back um, by the 2nd of January. Uh, in that month, uh, it, yes, it's Christmas and New Year's, but um, you know, if we stick with the same basic uh, uh, package that we used last year, and folks, I think for the most part, liked that approach. Um, and frankly, the budgets aren't that big. I, I know they appear very big to some folks, uh, but truthfully, if you've run any kind of organization, these in general uh, are not that, that big. Um, but we, then we have House Bill 1. Um, we open the warrant uh, mid-January um, uh, for citizens' petitions. Uh, with House 1 in place, I can revise the revenue projections um, if we think it's needed, um, close the warrant. I've been in uh, communication with uh, Superintendent Cassavant uh, several times now, um, and he is reasonably confident. Uh, that he can find a way to get a preliminary budget number to us by February 15. Uh, because without that, you're, you're kidding yourself. Um, yes, you can do budgets earlier, but what's the point when you don't have House 1 if you don't have school numbers? Uh, that'll be a challenge for him. It's a particular challenge, Monty Tech, which doesn't seem horribly interested in um, serving well its uh, member communities. Uh, on the general government side. Um, it gives me two weeks to finish a recommended package uh, to present to you um, at your last meeting of, uh, for the new town administrator to present to you uh, the um, budget package in February and then you've uh, each got um, roughly four weeks, six weeks on the board side, six weeks uh, on the advisory committee, which again, um, given much of your budget is advise is uh, debt, um, fringe benefits, and the like, um, a substantial amount of time, um, unless you're really trying to count pencils and pens and paper clips. Uh, so that's um, that's my recommendation. Uh, we would present. Uh, when we send this out in early December, a more detailed when um, um, filing deadlines fit in, uh, when um, annual reports fit in, all those kinds of things. Um, I did get a chance to look at this. Um, I, I think that you know having something like this uh, makes some sense. Um, having all the dates. Um, I think you probably think of it more in terms of weeks, not dates, because otherwise every year you've got to rewrite this to hit new dates. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that was left on my desk. I don't know if it made it into everybody's package or not. It came Please. from the chair. Um, that was... So, yes. It's 5B. It's really... Um, 
very detailed. I think that we can, you know, blend the two. Uh, but again, if you do it by weeks, like we do the Gantt chart, um, you don't have to recreate it every single year. This is a lot. To Makes a lot more sense. Recreate every single year, and it. Um, um, Where did this come from? It says approved. Who approved it? Is this uh, just a sample? This is ten four sixteen. This is a sample. I'm going to assume from oh. Wellfleet. Uh, because if you look on page two, about midway down, it refers to Wellfleet. It refers to a finance committee. It refers to charter provisions. But I, th I think this was a sample. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this also uh, gives away some of your, your rights uh, and responsibilities. But mm -hmm. I think that I can work uh, to bring you back a year-round calendar that uh, can, if, if you like this approach, if there's dates, like uh, you know, the big, the big thing well, here is that there's more time needed, more time needed, more time needed. If you want more time for your budget, move your town meeting to June. Right. Yeah. Because you're not moving the legislature and you're not moving the school districts. The only thing you can move that you have any control over is when you have your town meeting. And there certainly are plenty of town meetings out there that are the first or second week of of Joe. Mm -hmm. That's some food for thought too. I mean, that's, also, that's some food for thought as well. And uh, you can pick up, you can probably pick up a, a month. The town meeting day. That way. So um, we um, typically have ours the first hi, week of May, oh. correct? People are um, getting out of school. Second Saturday. Second Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. It should be moved back to during the week <clears throat> yeah, anyway we to evenings, but. Yeah, I think we should put an article on for this year. Yeah. You, we need you to could, do that. Yeah, you, you could move your election. You could move yeah, your town meeting. Yeah, I would like to move the elections. And you could, um, as we did with the, as we did with the um, uh, town clerk, right. um, you know, there's some things you could do that truly would buy you some time in a manner that makes sense. Trying to move the whole schedule up when right. you still got the legislature and the school. It would be very difficult. It seems that your two tying factors here, right, is that you have the House 1 bill that really – puts everything on hold. I mean, there's no point in assembling a budget for revenue or revenue forecasts when you're working with House One, right? And the second one is working with Monty Tech and kind of, I'm sure even Mr. Cassavant's a little, or Dr. Cassavant's a little pressed to get his prelims out as well. So he, he felt he could do it and there are school districts that yeah, do other it. Other towns comply with um, it's, all it's a stuff, challenge. So if you, if you can't can. get a preliminary budget from the schools by mid-February and a final by mid-March, you, you're just guessing. Mm -hmm. You're just guessing. And but if the those whole are the point only is to two develop, things that make it dependent on us. Yes. Or that we need those to feed in before we can even make any progress on anything. Otherwise, you are guessing okay. at what level of expenditure the town side of the house can engage in and still have a balanced budget. I think the problem with pushing out a town meeting until June is that we have the finance department who has to finish all kinds of things up and... I mean, it takes a little transfers, this, that. I just don't. We need to try to our best. And there's also a municipal finance calendar we could that's still, posted by the. I mean, we could still stick just, to this schedule here, but I think if who, we got the Who, for the most part, have never worked at the municipal level. I, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to it's say. Too aggressive. <laughs> I know it's very aggressive. And, and, but and it's for a town that has money. Yes, it's and we do. Basically, don't. that's what it's yeah. for. I and, like the schedule. And let me and say that. We got through, thanks to the change in the Municipal Finance Act, or the Municipal Modernization Act, uh, we were able to get through this year uh, with only one transfer, I think, being required at town meeting. Everything else was done internally. The second side of that uh, is that um, when I normally have free cash certified, if you can imagine this kind of anal about it, um, and I take really? I take a certain amount off the top to appropriate to cover for snow and ice in operating deficits at the annual town meeting. Um, you know, so you don't necessarily need as many of those last minute transfers. Uh, and this year, I think we grouped them all as one. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas in prior years, they had uh, required that they be processed every single one individually. 
So this year was one transfer request, one set of uh, accounting of uh, journal entries. Any other further discussion? We have to. Um, you it, didn't make any. Just. Uh, I, I guess the thing that I would want to know at this point is if you uh, are willing to entertain uh, inviting the advisory committee uh, at the several uh, points in time uh, that I've identified as I think being uh, meaningful uh, joint discussions and so, presentations. I know the department heads liked yeah. coming in and only having to make their presentation once. once. Mm -hmm. So the BOS workshop for the 3-2 and the 3-19 that has public work, that's when they um, the department heads come and present to yep. us. Yep. So on the 26th, I would give you, or you know, whoever's here, I would recommend uh, do the same as this time. Give that PowerPoint presentation, really drawing your attention to what the major changes are. Give you those books. Now you got two weeks uh, to go through this and yellow highlight and be ready uh, for the second um, for the department heads. If you have questions and can get them to us ahead of time, we can even have the department head prepared to answer those questions. I'm just wondering um, if we have to separate them out. If there's not anything else on the agenda, could they just come and want some people didn't even take 15 minutes to go over um, their budget and answer questions. So we're sometimes here until 930 at night. Could we do this? all in one night and um, then have a little bit more time to talk about some of the other stuff i mean what we set up is we've set up one presentation and three workshops uh, mm -hmm. for you certainly we can invite them all at once this was done in part so that nobody was kind of sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting but Sorry, more importantly heads. but more Sometimes importantly you have to. um to give you time uh, so that you weren't trying to get through the entire book for the first night so you were zeroing in on that set of departments that were going to be here the one night i think that's a good idea and then to you'd have two more on. weeks to get into the next group well we do the first well, presentation on 226 and nobody comes until three chill so what why would we even be questioning anyone the first night you wouldn't that's my what i'm saying is this board. one three two and three nineteen can we combine those not the recommended budget and I'm sorry, did I? Yeah, so I think Carter's whole point was that if you, when you cram six departments in one session, you're kind of getting a lot of numbers. It's not thrown. six, it's, it's all of, of them. Yes. Remember, public food. works is, is uh, highway, buildings and grounds, and the sewer department. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you're getting all these in there, it's your tension spans kind of dwindling. Okay, so at what point? Kind of okay, then that's fine. Individually. But you can't, so, all right. So then we came back and we said, um, well, can we move this number from here to there? Can we, how are we going to do that? Where, so is everybody going to come back when we discuss? Because can you imagine? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayo, we would like to move this money over to the finance department because we don't agree. That was my problem Isn't with there how a, it was done last year. another for the 4 2 18 with a general discussion where everybody can come attend yep. and we can discuss it then? Is that how that's going to yeah. happen? I, I believe that's what I'm looking at. That, that would be my intent. Yeah. I hope there's nothing else on the um, on the agenda that night, unless right, it's simple. Again, because we, we it was a, it was hectic year, and a hassle, and I don't want to three nights. There shouldn't be any action. Turned on. into like three nights. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, a a little, I, I think we can try to have less. Well, I think we could try to have more targeted heartburn this year. Yeah. Targeted heartburn. <laughs> really. So I I just think that okay generally speaking uh, I like the schedule. On generally speaking, I want you know the discussions surrounding the budget to to be more you know as long as there's no surprises like we, we, merging departments and there, I might not lose my mind. Well, um, I but to if there are, I would like to know that earlier. If I'm still here, I recommend some good therapists for you. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> anyway. Th there's always, there's always going to be a surprise of, of some sort because you cannot sustain uh, your budgets operationally without the ability to simply, to just raise taxes. 
Um, but let me say that this is not etched in stone. Okay. I think that the decision for the board, by the time I come back uh, with the full budget guidance memo going out to everybody, is whether or not you believe you can get through the entirety of the book in two weeks so that you can have all the department heads in here mm -hmm. on March 2nd and have a meaningful mm -hmm. conversation with them. If you think you can, then yeah, sorry department heads, that's your job. Show up, here's the schedule, we'll get to you. That really, because they know what their budget's going to be, they've done all their homework. Um, it really, the burden is one for the board to decide for itself. And would, do we necessarily need two weeks between yeah, the second and the nineteenth? I mean, why can't we? I think just we can do special meetings. If, if, with one week if you're apart. willing to have some special meetings in there, absolutely. Yeah, I, absolutely. That's I think part we of should. Do you know? I've spoken mm -hmm. to um, the town clerk and um, Acton, and much bigger than we are, and they have to sit in one night and go through their budgets. Again, I'm sorry, department heads, but. You know, they just, they want to present it to their board, and they have to wait in line. And I think that if we know, like, who's sewer, you know, Mr. Mayo has, you know, f f I don't know. Maybe we do it in two nights, but not two weeks apart. That's And I do I'm think thinking. there is also some advantage for, you know, other departments to hear what the other departments are Same. presenting about their budget, you know, why they think they need, you know, X and some other department now has a better understanding of what that department is doing. With, so there's some advantage to everybody being With the staff together. meeting, and they are given a preview of the entire budget before they come in here. They do have that. Um, and we have the, the grouse sessions and the you know commiseration uh, parties uh, jointly. Uh, but again, this really is is your judgment call. I would need to know by December um, or late November uh, because if you feel you can get through all that book uh, in a week such that or two weeks so that you're ready to talk with all department heads not a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to have some special meetings Monday night's your business meeting and Tuesday night's going to be budget workshop again not a problem. That part of the schedule mm -hmm. Really, truly, is your judgment call. So, should we table this item for until next week and have it added to the agenda for next week? That way, we can give it some next thought. Week. And, and or not next week, two weeks from. Oh um, and I just missed something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, truthfully, if people just shoot me their thoughts individually, yeah, I, think, I can well, work. I can work here. it into the November okay, um, calendar. Okay. I, because I bring the budget guidance memo that's going out to all the departments uh, in for y'all to review because that contains your policy directives. Okay. I think this year, I'm not think, I hope, um, because we've settled so many things and we're not dealing with crisis and then another crisis and then, okay, don't say anything. Just, just go with my bubble right now. <laughs> just really, just go with my bubble. Anyway, that's my thought on that. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand there's a general consensus that the approach works. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a general consensus to invite the advisory uh, committee to participate in the workshops where there's an asterisk, uh, and there's a general consensus that you want uh, a little bit of time uh, to think about collapsing some of the schedule uh, depending upon your ability to get through the book and or have some special uh, meetings. And that piece of it will finalize uh, over the next month or, or My months. question for you before, I, I do uh, agree with everything stated above. Um, however, with 1106 and 1108, where we have the Board of Selectmen Review Revenue Projections, um, and then it says invite the uh, advisory committee, and then the advisory committee will review and advise on those revenue projections two days later. Um, so is that that's how that's intended? Yeah. Okay. So a joint meeting, uh, and then they'll again. This discuss. is not that much money. Okay. And we already had most <coughs> of that had policy all. discussion <coughs> this year, uh, and it's my intent on the revenue projections uh, to um, 
Uh, I know they had uh, a couple of concerns. The three major ones uh, were the um, use of the full uh, tax levy. There's no appetite on this board for dialing that back. Uh, there was a, um, a recommendation that we rely, not rely upon new growth at all. Uh, I did not sense any appetite on the board for that. Uh, there was a recommendation that we not use uh, sale of surplus. I think we can dial that back. So I'm going to try to have built into the revenue projections um, some actual dial back or a little bit of, um, or at least try to recognize some of those things where I, I think there was some common ground. Okay. Thank Would you. it make sense, um, just a question, you know, so we have both us and the advisory committee when you present the numbers, then the advisory committee goes to their meeting a couple days later and looks at it, and then on the 14th we set it. Would it be reasonable that the advisory committee be there on the 14th so that we could hear what their thoughts and, and were from sure. their meeting on the 8th? I mean, we can always ask them for their... That. I mean, we're going to... Can we ask them for, yeah, like, well, notes for what they're saying or... Yeah, I, I... Like, I would hope that we would get that before we're deciding on the 4th. My but they, if they're, they're invited, then we report. would get notes from them prior to us meet. But they, yeah, why wouldn't mm -hmm. it be joint? Not sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think we can figure okay. out because you know it's, it's not uncommon that you have a committee or a department head come in and make their recommendation to you. So I mm -hmm. think we can. Okay. I think we can do that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All right. Next item is the OML update. Um, so we have received responses from Jeff Bennett and Julie Farrell. Um, I'm going to spare uh, everyone reading these OML responses um, as we have them in front of us. Um, I think I'll point attention to a few items on these documents. Uh, with Jeff Bennett, uh, one of the last lines of the report, second to last paragraph, um, he states, since resignation would be an individual choice rather than a vote of the committee, I asked each individual separately and privately the question the selectmen have asked for your resignation from the advisory committee, so what say you? Uh, which is an open meeting law violation there. Uh, Julie Farrell had also, in her response, um, included a lot of things that aren't relevant to this open meeting law complaint. I mean, she mentions bans, she mentions interest rates, she mentions, mentions a lot of around the item topics. I think this right here is a clear definition that they haven't learned a lesson. They're not willing to bend to the, bend to whatever uh, the open meeting law and they're just not getting it. And I, I mean, I know that, like I said, that was an open meeting law violation. I think it's time that, you know, we act as the adults here. This isn't getting us anywhere. Uh, I don't think, I can't see them, uh, coming anywhere with these, coming to any terms. So I am going to say uh, that I recommend we drop these. We don't even submit them to the Attorney General. Um, that's my recommendation because this, this is clearly just going to continue and just continue and continue. And, and this is going to take time from everybody. And they're not willing to be adults. And that's, that's what I'm getting from this, is they're not willing to be adults when it comes to these, these items, in which they are very serious. However, uh, I don't think it's worth the time and effort. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're getting nowhere. We're wasting you know, our time, the people's time for listening about it. It is serious. I mean, as representatives of the town, everybody should be concerned about the open meeting law and being transparent um, and not, you know, making accusations, calling names and things like that. But again, it, it, we're just spinning our wheels in the mud and wasting time. Let's just move on and um, hope that everybody can realize what their, their role and responsibility is and um, conduct ourselves in a professional manner. And I would just like to say um, thank you to um, Carter and Holly for putting so much time and um, effort 
into these and they're filed and we have to answer and we have to respond and I don't disagree with you. I voted no um, at the last meeting. I, I guess I would like to ask that <clears throat> sometimes it's so much better to come and have a conversation. Call us. Come here. You're doing this. You're not doing that. You're And there's time for public comment. We allow public commentary usually um, during the business meeting. So, yay, let's be done. Thanks. Uh, we should have a motion. To I would move, uh, I would suggest that you move to uh, place the responses on file. I make a motion to replace, to place, well, I said that one, the responses on file. And to take no further action. Second. Your motion for and a second. Any discretion from anyone? I, I do want to say again, I said this the last time when we filed these that I transparent government has been such a problem for Templeton it seems and it always seems to be an issue for a lot of governments um, you know it, it seems although things can be done by the book sometimes it looks like governments do sh you know shady things uh, and I think this is one of those blemishes on Templeton is that when you have individuals that you know violate open meeting laws or anything along those lines or you know decide to do seemingly uh, non-transparent actions it, it makes government work that much that much less efficiently uh, and it makes it harder for everybody else in this community to continue to move forward when we have issues like this uh, and it's unfortunate that um, we can't seem to get past that I do think that maybe uh, a remediation for all of this would be a, a training session that maybe all of these boards or maybe committees can attend at large uh, so that we all can be more clear and, and understanding of what open meeting law violation is. That way we don't have to continue to waste everyone's time with these useless paper violations. Um, and I've made my peace with that. No further discussion than... Can, we, can we make um, a uh, call to um, and ask for training to be done for at sure. minimum? They, um, they offer it. Uh, you can either do a seminar, it's like an online um, webinar that they host or you can do it in an in-person they hold it like once a month oh you have to go there yep yeah it's free don't they come here uh, they come? I'm sure if we can get a large enough request I'm sure if, they can make um, an exception we might be able to put something together we can reach out in the you next think that the so. advent or the use of um, social media and it's it's harder because you you know I see I see all sides I'm a big um, social media um, it's how I communicate with the residents and my friends and whatever but if there was some way that we could all um, take that together and some healing needs to be done mm -hmm. it's we the community deserves that so that because when like what you're saying that we just can't trust that's what's most important so if we could look into that sure please and thank you all right so motion for second uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did, did Doug second that? I did. Oh, sorry. Diane? I didn't hear that. Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. <coughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. um, the next item is the IMA TA update, and I will refer that to Carter. Um, so, uh, um, I did a couple of things over the past two weeks. Uh, the first is I advised you uh, that Mr. Hickey had suggested to his board uh, that they consider entering into a one-year trial agreement. That would have let you hammer out something much more quickly, perhaps get started uh, as early as next month, uh, and then in the spring take a, a three-year or longer-term agreement to their annual uh, town meeting. Uh, and that would have provided a, a, a proving point, would have given you a one-year breather, um, even if they didn't extend, and it would have given the, their community and your community a kind of a, a proof period that this uh, could work um, beyond just what, what folks saw as the um, uh, benefits. Um, so he did take that to his board. He discussed it, and their decision uh, was that uh, in any event, be it one year, three year, 
uh, they wanted the agreement to go to town meeting. So, you know, whether that's their town meeting is late October, November, that's the earliest uh, you're going to know. Uh, and then you still have the potential that if they say no, you would need six months uh, beyond that possibly to fill the position uh, on a permanent, uh, a longer term basis. Uh, so the subcommittee um, uh, is meeting, I believe, uh, October 23rd, uh, 23rd Wednesday. Uh, of this month. I'm going to do a, a kind of a very simplistic cut and paste. I'll get out to Diane and um, uh, uh, Cameron to you, and, and then maybe the three of us could chat before we go up to um, uh, uh, Wednesday. <coughs> So uh, and that certainly uh, remains, you know, a, sh a short-term potential of November, perhaps, December 1. Uh, but you've got a plan for the Plan B side of mm -hmm. uh, things. Uh, so I did a couple things. Um, I did uh, review the applicant pool with, uh, with UMass Collins. Um, because of uh, privacy issues, they would not just release all the resumes uh, to me, but we did go through who'd applied. I, knew a number of them um, already. Uh, and based upon the, <clears throat> excuse me, the profile and challenge statement that you all had approved, prior municipal experience, so on and so forth. Um, you know, and, and we're sitting on a screening committee, we might always, each of us see something just a, a bit different. Um, bottom line is though, it looks like it was pretty consistent and some of the folks who dropped out, um, dropped out either because they'd negotiated a better deal with their, their current employer, they've been offered employment um, elsewhere, um, or in uh, one case, um, uh, the background check just washed them out completely. Um, uh, so I think that, um, it, you know, going back to that pool is really, uh, unless you were doing a targeted mm -hmm. uh, uh, recruitment of your own. Um, I have uh, inquired of the uh, Mass Municipal Association uh, as to whether or not there were any longer term part-time administrators. Um, I identified six, that list has now grown to seven. Um, uh, and basically uh, everyone on that list um, uh, has either maxed out their hours for the year. Uh, we can only work so many hours or so many dollars uh, every calendar year. Uh, my work for you is kind of split calendar year, so I've been okay so far. Um, uh, but they're either uh, out of the pool for a while till January 1, um, or they are in commitments, whether they're in a commitment in Leicester or uh, in Spencer or in Southampton or another community. Uh, so I did send out a request to um, uh, UMass Collins, uh, knowing they might have a slightly different list of, of folks. Uh, and I prepared a posting for a municipal management fellow uh, the main difference between a fellow and an intern is when a lot of folks look at internships, they think in terms of credit, this is a longer term period than it is uh, potentially for pay. Um, we're talking about 50K plus or minus. Um, and um, uh, so we have the, the monies uh, in the budget for a TA of 110 uh, in a clerical position, about 15. So we have 125 uh, in the budget, uh, and then we have the benefits uh, over in the separate uh, budget. Uh, so money-wise, we're, we're probably in, in decent shape uh, between what you've saved uh, on me and then even if Mr. Hickey were to come in in December 1 or January 1. Um, and I've given you what that uh, advertisement could, uh, could look like. Um, so um, I guess uh, what I'm uh, suggesting uh, here this evening uh, is that you consider uh, letting me proceed to place the ad for the Municipal Management Fellow. I have to warn you, this is not the optimum time of year to be doing this. Normally when you're looking for graduate students who are about to you know, walk down the, uh, the, the auditorium aisle, um, you do it March to May, we're not in that window, so this, this might not pan out well, uh, but if we could find somebody that's a good fit, um, and if you found a part-time uh, administrator on a long term, it could get you a year, which is going to get you past the 17 audit, it's going to get you past your credit rating, it's going to get you into construction on your school, 
Uh, it's going to get you into a, a FY19 budget that um, um, is going to be perfectly smooth and no problems. Um, and it really will set you in a very different light uh, in terms of trying to do a, a recruitment for a full-time person. Or if this person, uh, you know, uh, can sing and dance and walk on water, this could be the succession plan uh, to get you to a, a full-time hire. Um, it also lets us still uh, back out um, because at this point you would only be taking applications. You would be doing nothing else. So happy to answer any questions, but that's sort of the best plan A, plan B I've been able to come up with in the past. Year. So this is supposed to be posted on the 17th? Uh, uh, subject to your approval tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. What I do is when I prepare an advert, um, I always put down where I'm going to do it and the dates. That becomes kind of my easy record in the future when somebody says, well, where did that? I don't have to try to remember it. I pull the posting and there it is. You know, it's, it's, it's just sort of an, an easy shorthand for remembering what we did with the bloody thing. Effective way. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll pitch, pitch the question to you. Uh, do you feel comfortable currently as in your capacity now to take on uh, a management fellow? Yes. Okay. That's all I needed to ask. Yes, because the time that I spend right now, uh, you know, chasing this kind of stuff or doing, um, you know, a, a simple budget analysis um, can be done by the management fellow, and I can you know, use that time better to mentor them and provide that general oversight. And also do the high level rather than the, the individual. Yes, again, it's papers. that, you know, right sizing the job to the pay kind mm -hmm. of thing. Okay. Now, this is going to be challenging because we're not in the right, best yeah. time of year to do it. Um, but there are people working for. Hopefully. Work. Hopefully. We've identified about 10 schools. Um, also, um, I'll reach out to ICMA to see if that applicants they were not able to fill. Um, your rents uh, in this area are fortunately low enough. So if someone was looking in New York or um, you know some other region uh, and didn't get placed, uh, perhaps they could consider actually moving to this area. Uh, and I have uh, reached out to my uh, uh, contacts at uh, UNH. Um, so we're I'm hopeful. Okay, excellent. So you'll post it down at all of those 10 I would like to make a motion to have this um, employment opportunity posted as, as presented. And I would second that. A motion for and a second. Any questions? Thank you. Pat. Seeing none. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, and if you were to retain someone and if the Winchenden deal, the person would still be here to be supportive of Winch and to help offset theirs. Mm -hmm. the, the succession piece of it might not go on. Pan out as well. Um, but I would envision that once, you, if you make a 12 month commitment to one of these folks, you would need to keep it. Um, I think I just stood meeting minutes. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that takes care of that. Um, all right, old business. Um, I'm going to bring up the financial policies for old business. Um, speaking on behalf of the chairman, uh, John had told me that he received back the draft proposed financial management policies for the town of Templeton. Um, and as you can see, they're extensive. They're nearly 25 pages. Um, I don't know if you guys had the chance to really go through these and look mm -hmm. through them. Um, I'm not going to say we're going to do any action on these because we still. There's a lot here, and I think the scope of what's put in these policies, and this is my opinion on it, uh, is overly. Uh, you know, uh, and I think that some of this can kind of be curbed back, and the the language can kind of be less restrictive on it. Um, watered down, I would say, is the the point. And I think Kelly might Kelly, or even the, some of the you know, treasurer and collectors might think that it'd be a little bit easier for 
I, I think that it's my understanding that they've all been meeting with um, the Collins Institute, mm -hmm. and this is what they've um, come up with. No, I understand that. That's what I thought was happening. We did. In the, in the very beginning, when the Collins came, we met with them several times and went through all of the things that they wanted to look at as policies, go over what we it thought was, it would be. It was more table of content and work and list working yes, than on it things. was. Yeah. Uh, your authority mm -hmm. um, in a manner that will um, continue some of the conflicts. So these came to John and under. not to you? Uh, they may have come I to me as, as well. I'm sorry. Yeah, but, no, no, oh, okay. 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 It, it, it may have. I thought also <clears throat> that this was going to be something that was discussed at the workshop on 9-6. Am I wrong I, I think that? I think we certainly can add that. We can add workshop items. I would like to say that I think the primary thrust of the 9-6 workshop really needs to be those surveys you all are filling out uh, and sense of <laughs> yeah. um, direction uh, for the budget because that allows me to prepare that policy statement mm -hmm. which is what forms the basis of the budget. Okay. I, I would argue that this needs to be reviewed as soon as possible and sure. I think if we get to if we delay to the workshop 9-6 uh, Well it's already the 14th of August so I think right, so 9 6 is really our next meeting is um, August 28th and then it's a Wednesday after that but if what the surveys are going to be discussed so it depends on what's being discussed at our regular business meeting on the 28th we'll so get I, it circulated to the staff tomorrow and I'll yeah, try to I would like them them to if see. I may I think that we should obviously distribute it to department heads people that this will affect and and I think we as a board should go through it and kind of I mean there's hard numbers in here um, for example, we'll look at general stabilization policy. Shall maintain a general stabilization fund of not less than 5% of the prior year's omnibus operating budget, less school debt. And it's like, so you have these fixed numbers in here, and we have to, as a board, determine are these good or are these bad. Uh, and, and instead of just taking their word and saying, yep, these are good, let's go. I think this is something we need to take an active approach on. And if we have to do it, you know, five pages every meeting and, and break it down that way, it's better than saying let's postpone it till September 6th and attack it from there. I think we should. Well, one of the things, if I might, if the, the board needs to be, think about, because you need to have this discussion with the staff, and it did not, this discussion has not happened. It was represented in Winchington that it has, and to my knowledge, it has not happened. And to my knowledge, there was no board uh, staff consensus around it. If you're going to move forward with Winchington, um, and, and I think you can start to think about this even without knowing if Winchin didn't it's going to happen. Um, somebody's got to move. They're on Monday to Thursday. You're on Monday to Thursday. Uh, he can't get five business days in um, as good as he is uh, in four. Somebody has to move. And when you move, that means there has to be a discussion about how are you going to deal with Monday holidays. That's of concern to the staff. Um, and what it doesn't mean to your meetings. And so if you're, I think that might be a good discussion to have earlier. Um, so I can have that discussion with the staff and you might want to just make that agreement, to make that decision irrespective of what Winston does. Mm -hmm. You might not. Um, okay. And um, that then causes us, because we're now in the midst of shortly uh, preparing a FY a calendar 18 budget a, a calendar meeting calendar I'm sorry to bring oh, to right you. Now. Mm -hmm. so I think for the for the recommendation then distribute this to the department heads you betcha uh, um, let them you know go through it, things that are relevant to them uh, obviously this is a draft um, I would say I might be shooting myself in the foot with it right now, but distribute it to the advisory committee um, and let them review this and see their, their input, their thoughts. After. 
I would suggest that the board, I would respectfully suggest that the board take one pass through. Yeah, mm -hmm. I respectfully um, Because I think when you have same. a chance to look through it, um, you'll see that you are potentially ceding a substantial amount of your authority, which could only continue this conflict. You can go on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and this is, you know, what Tam pointed out here, where it's kind of got a fixed calculation of, you know, what your stabilization number is going to be. Um, when the advisory committee, um, you know, made recommendations to the select board back in 2013 on uh, financial policies, um, it had those very fixed calculations in it as well, which is why at that time the select board said we'll take these on as goals but not as mm -hmm. a policy because we can't commit to a fixed calculation because we don't know what the state of the budget's going to be if we say you know based on this calculation we've got to put you know twenty five thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars into savings and we're in a budget season where that's going to mean well we've got to eliminate three departments or we've got to get rid of Two police officers in order to meet that is that really in the town's best interest some of that can be driven by the use of free cash so for instance um, I've generally followed a formula uh, where I take the free cash that's available for a year I um, can I uh, uh, if I may um, I don't think we should be discussing the individual merits sure. of this right now because I what I what I would hate for it to happen is that we discuss this right the stabilization we bring that out and then we discuss it again when we actually go to make and review these documents so I what I would suggest is that is a very valid mm -hmm. point as a makes a ton of sense when we review these make these notes make these suggestions right. and we'll attack this right. thing you know paragraph by paragraph like we Excellent did for the room um, so that way we can defer all conversation like I said pass it out to department heads let them get their input and we'll come together at a meeting, uh, you know, with ammo, and we'll rip it apart and see what we can come up with. We'll have it out to uh, folks uh, within the next day. Perfect. Right. Any other discussion? Right. Um, and then municipal calendar. I believe we just that was the the sample document that we had reviewed. Um, I I'll actually. Now, it's not for us, Bali, for our meetings for. Um, for our meetings for the coming year. It's not. It's not a. Meet, it's not a meeting calendar. Oh, it's an idea okay. that okay. you would establish a calendar that says, "Here's what we do in August. Oh, okay. Here's what we do in September, yeah. um, November, Everything. and the like." And that was the one where I suggested that maybe you look in terms of, you know, week one, week two, um, as opposed to fixed dates. So you don't have to rewrite it every every month. Yeah, kind of it's a step-by-step -step for how we should attack just about everything for the, the rest of the things that were on here we're supposed to just be on here to yep. think so. that we have to wait till we have a meeting and say okay well who was responsible for the lapel pin policy and when's that going to be done social media policy and when's that going to be done because my two things aren't even on here at all and they need to be added to that okay so, and i already um, it, asked Holly about that yeah in old so business you, you can bring that up I mean if, if it just comes to any old business and we've talked about it once you can bring it up no matter what so well I'm just saying that I think that we should have um, who's responsible and by what date and because otherwise we're just I know for me it's it ends up being not a priority because other things become a priority working mm -hmm. here my job my mm -hmm. family so I'm just it's a good reminder because I keep my agendas and my notes mm -hmm. um, to try to you know, I don't know. I think that just yeah, I didn't assemble it, so that's some of the to talk yeah, with John about for the, was, for the yeah, business. I, I will say that, that we've um, it's discussed be procurement, and that's becoming um, yeah, we're gonna do that very important. Yeah, uh, that we address this in a way that will work, yeah, um, so that there's a purchase orders in a manner that mm -hmm. allow us to control the procurement. Uh, but uh, uh, don't create accounting problems because our current accounting does not have a true purchase order system. <clears throat> um, and we really don't want to do it the way it does it because it's it we've experienced. Yeah. So if we could set some. Yep. You know, Can you make an appointment with me or yep. should 
Mr. Mayo come or anyone else like who's going to be more responsible? I, I think that we've done a nice first cut. The Goro's got a little bit more work okay. um, on it, but I think that we did a nice first cut. Uh, what Kelly did for me was she ran for fiscal 17 mm -hmm. uh, the payment to all of our vendors. So we've got 24 oh, okay. some odd pages. We have a sense of um, you know how much we paid everybody so we can pick an appropriate level for purchase orders that will hopefully resolve the procurement problems okay. and then we have to back in how we can make that work for for Kelly mm -hmm. uh, given our software issue okay. so we'll set yeah. uh, some time up with you yeah. um, building counter that's John uh, website project I, I do have a report on that so um, in the process of, of reviewing this information, uh, I'm actually nearing the steps of where I'll be sending out, uh, you know, questions to department heads for their feedback on their web pages. Uh, I will be reaching out to the light and water company to see what they want to do on their web page on ours or their their page on our website, um, and see how they want to link that and with whatever they want on there. Um, same thing with the sewer department. I also some of the icons and pictures that are on there. Um, Hope everybody's all right. Um, so I, I, for example, when you log on to the website, there is the Templeton seal. Uh, I have a friend of mine. He's very good with Photoshop and, and creating high-res images out of low-res images. So he's going to take that and he's going to adjust that so that it actually looks um, very nice on the website. And there's also photos that I've been looking for so that we can um, maybe change some of the photos that we're placing on for these headings. Uh, and so overall, this, it's working, it's progressing, we're getting there. Um, Holly, I would say probably the next two, three weeks would be my submittal of pages. I'm going to print out the page, and then uh, it will have the edits, the revisions, and the changes that need to be made. Um, formatting, I'm not sure to the extent of what you will be able to format in as terms, like, you know, like the weather app we had discussed that was on there. I don't know the extent of what you'll be able to format for that, but we'll, we can discuss that when it comes closer. If we could get that high res town seal yep. when you get there, because that will improve our letterheads and some other yeah, things. That it's going to be at 4K resolution, and it's yep. it's going to be the same seal. Um, Just cleaned up so it doesn't have the shadow yeah. around it. He's going to try to do. Um, so I guess I don't know if, if you ever know like that that arm over the the seal that we have. That's actually from the Massachusetts state seal. That it's like a Union arm or whatever it is of infantry, and then. There's the actual state seal itself. That's it's pretty much the Massachusetts state seal, just transposed with different wording and you know a few different things on there. So what he's going to do is he's going to do it, you know, touch up that first one, and then he's also going to try to change it to make it look like the Massachusetts state seal, um, so that we can kind of look and see if that's a better design for what originally was the state for the town seal and things like that. So he's yeah he's going to kick it around. We might we might be able to get a really nice high res seal that we can put on letterheads and, and kind of formalize our documents and things like that so okay. um, but yeah that's where that's going and uh, okay. and I don't know Doug if you want to talk about the tech project or anything I can just a little bit we've not taken any action on it yet Carter and I kind of discussed it um, when the process with the uh, town administrator and we met with the DOR and the DLS we uh, kind of in the back of our mind said well Maybe we can get some funding if the town administrator um, sharing works out that, you know, because Zachary from the DLS had talked about, um, you know, perhaps getting some capital funds to fund some stuff and this project would have fallen exactly into that um, category. So we didn't take action on it right then, kind of waiting to see how this was going to transpire, but we probably need to talk about it again. I believe they're going to, if you could wait maybe one more week, because I believe they're trying to have him at the subcommittee meeting on yes. the agreement. Yeah. Um, so perhaps the subcommittee could get a little more guidance on what that might look like, mm -hmm. um, you know, how that uh, promise can be turned into reality. Yeah. So, again, it's only about... Um, you know, it's about a 30-day project for Rudder once we, you know, pull the trigger. Um, it needs to get completed, you know, this fiscal year. Um, so, but again, you know, waiting another, you know, one week to four weeks isn't going to, you know, hamper us any more than it already has. So, um, and I if think we can get some other funding, 
The general scope better. of that, right, is to just bring a server in-house so that we can put it all on one network, is that? Well, we actually have a server, Okay. Um, but it's not a domain controller, it's not an Active Directory okay. server. So the goal of the project is to take the existing server, um, make it a domain controller, um, establish Active Directory, mm -hmm. um, then take all of the PCs in Town Hall, join them to the domain, and create a Active Directory user account for every user at Town Hall. Uh, okay, um, and that's to mitigate security risk, correct? Correct, yep. to mitigate security. Um, and then what we'll do is create a um, data storage folder on um, the server and replace everybody's My Documents folder with the data storage folder mm, on the server. Drive. So then that everybody's documents are now stored with a secured manner because of Active Directory um, on the server versus on their local C drives. Mm -hmm. So now if a PC crashes, there's really nothing on the C drive of any consequence. On the network. Um, so um, okay. then we can do the streaming backup, which we do now, and actually back up our data versus a you know, relatively dead inactive server like we're doing now. Okay, excellent. Um, and I, if there's no further discussion or any old business anybody wants to bring up, I'll open it up to public comment. All right. Um, I do. Oh. I, I do just have one question. Um, you haven't beyond the agenda for John to discuss the finance office, the counter. Mm -hmm. do, do we know where that's going? Because that was one of the questions the auditors had, you know, about the security of that office. I explained to them, you know, that we were in the process of working on that, and that's something we really need to work on more swiftly. So, so I don't know. John had discussed with me, and I, I can't speak for him. Um, on, on he he is going to go in there with the building inspector, to my knowledge, and he is going to build out of his own time, his free time, and, and I believe. Um, don't quote me on this. I think it was five hundred dollars worth of materials okay. to build that that counter. Uh, what he needs, though, is he needs the approval from the Board of the Selectmen to do that. And I believe, uh, since he is retired, that he should, you know, be able to complete that in a relatively short window of time. Um, as far as this, what it's going to look like, the scope of it, that's why yeah. I'm deferring it. John, it's yeah, a question for John. that's not really the concern. It's just that we need to get moving on this. So mm -hmm. it's not, so like now, since it's not being voted on now, we're looking at another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would, I, with due respect, I don't believe this needs to be voted on by the board. Buildings uh, and grounds subject to the right. budget are under the control of the buildings and grounds department. Um, we indicated that we had priorities for things. I think that I can uh, get together with Alan and do a quick sketch plan um, because it's not just a wall. We've got to do the cabinetry, we've got to do the countertop, we've got to do the security glass. There's some, other some things. yeah, there's safety uh, glass, the there's... It's not just um, opening up a wall. So God, let's, I hope um, not. We'll, uh, I don't understand. Alan and I and um, yeah, this doesn't need to come. Kelly will will work on this, and unless it turns out to be something you know dramatic where we can't handle it within budget, we'll we'll keep you advised as opposed to requesting permission if that's uh, in keeping with everyone's understanding of the Excellent. job descriptions you've given the Absolutely. two of us. Certainly. Um, Thank you. Yep. Any Thanks, board or staff comments? Um, if, if I might, I think we've spoken to finance where we are on, on this. We've got that uh, um, update off to Mary Jane Handy, um, and we'll bring you further update. But we're, uh, we're right on track of where we want it to be. Excellent. Um, uh, the school, uh, we got a number of pre-qualified firms, and I think I informed you in uh, one of the updates that the cost estimate uh, we moved, if you may recall, we moved that forward because the only redesign that had to be done was a little tweaking around the energy uh, and that um, uh, uh, estimate uh, showed the project still remains uh, 500,000 plus or minus under projected budget so certainly within budget with that healthy uh, contingency and the ability to do furnishings and equipment uh, within a budget they may be able to bid out a week or so early truthfully they could probably go almost now but we've got to get our finance side of things so that we aren't sitting there holding 
bids too long. Mm -hmm. um, uh, finally, uh, for you and for the uh, community, um, I would just remind folks that the uh, annual bulky waste day that the Board of Health is uh, uh, carries out is on the 26th of August. Chair, if I might, if I might add to that a little bit, um, uh, the bulky waste day was on the um, electronic billboard, but because we need the electronic billboard for the change in the one way, um, it is no longer being flashed on the, the electronic billboard. I did talk with the Board of Health and they are aware of that and, and felt that this was more of a priority for that electronic billboard. But um, certainly we need to reach out to folks and make sure they understand that that, that is. Uh, so that's the only that's for electronic billboard. We only have one electronic right? billboard in town. Does um, the school have something? That or is, is the that one, the that one that's the there one. to, because yes. it's uh, the most local? Yeah, usually we borrow one through another town like Phillipston or mm -hmm. um, we reached out to Phillipston today. Theirs is also being done with a reroute of roads in their town. Um, we chased one down in Winchenden, which gave us two for our roads here for, for our one-way change. Um, and I do have a call into Gardner to see if we can borrow one from them, too. Uh, so. Alan, let's grab Lori and we'll do a script for a code red that can be broadcast on the 21st. Yeah, I'll uh, be in tomorrow July. anyway, so we'll do that. Okay. It's been a little upset. Mm -hmm. No big deal. So. All right, thank you. Alrighty, and we have a potential request for executive session. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm requesting that the board go into executive session. Uh, under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21-3, uh, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, uh, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect uh, on the bargaining position of the public body, uh, and that you would so declare. Uh, I do not anticipate um, the board taking any votes in public after this, uh, and I would anticipate that you would reconvene only for the purposes of adjournment. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. No discussion. Diane? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Christine.